RTX 2060. It is the cheapest ray tracing capable card on the used market. If you wanna have a taste of ray tracing for cheap, then this might be the perfect GPU for you. RTX 2060 has a native support for DirectX 12, which means that it will run any of the modern games without any issues. It also supports the LSS 3.0, which is great because in cases where you're in need of some additional frames, the LSS 3.0 is already a well-refined upscaling feature that doesn't ruin the image quality all that much. Nowadays you can probably find this GPU for around $100 to $150 in a used condition, depending on where you live. It doesn't draw too much power, it only needs a single 8-pin power cable, which is great because you will most likely not need a power supply upgrade. When RTX 2060 got released, it couldn't handle ray tracing all that well. Ray tracing was still a fresh feature that needed a bit of refining, but now, after many years, the drivers have matured a bit and you'll actually be amazed of how well this GPU can do ray tracing in 2024. So why don't we dive into the benchmarks and see what kind of results we get. For the benchmarks I chose 9 games to test the performance of this GPU. Let's begin with Forza Horizon 5. For this game we'll be using Ultra preset and we're gonna set ray tracing to Ultra as well. When I was testing this game I noticed that without the LSS the edges of the cars and other stuff were too rough or too jagged. So then I enabled the LSS, set it to quality and it just made the game look way better. In terms of FPS I didn't really notice much if any difference at all between having the LSS on or off. For the reference, here is side to side comparison of the gameplay without the LSS and with the LSS on quality. Now it might not be as visible through the video, but when I was looking at my monitor with my own eyes, the difference was quite noticeable. Anyhow, throughout the built-in benchmark, which is by the way a lot more demanding than your standard gameplay, because there are a lot more cars here, we had around 70 FPS. It never went below 60 and sometimes it even went up to mid 80s. Doom Eternal is another well-utilized game. In my opinion it's even the best, but that's a discussion for another day. Here we have Ultra Nightmare preset with textures set to high. No DLSS and ray tracing is enabled. Now in shooters most people would normally lower the graphics to get a bit better response time, but we are testing ray tracing today so we don't care. In areas where there are no monsters and it's a bit of a close environment, you'll get around 80 to 90 FPS or even 100. In combat, however, you'll be sitting at 60-ish FPS, give or take. Occasionally, it will drop below 60 when there are too many animations happening at the same time, but besides that, you should be hovering somewhere between 60 to 70 FPS. I also tried enabling the LSS, but weirdly enough, it reduced my FPS. I even tried restarting the game, changing the graphics back and forth, but for some weird reason, the LSS still kept reducing my FPS. World of Warcraft Dragonflight We're running the highest possible settings here with ray tracing enabled. Now the game itself is pretty old, which means that it's really easy to run and even though we're on the highest settings, we're getting a stable 100 to 200 FPS based on where you are. This is an MMO after all and if you're in a raid where there are a lot of players, the FPS might even drop below 100 and if you're in an open world where there's not a lot happening, you might even get more than 200 FPS. So I decided to test the game in dungeons which is basically a middle ground in terms of how much stress the game puts on the computer. All in all I'd say that hardware like this is even an overkill for a game like World of Warcraft. Control. Here we are running ultra settings, ray tracing is on and we have the LSS enabled. Outside of combat we are getting somewhere between 60 to 80 FPS, but it really depends on where you are and how many destroyed objects are near you. In combat however, we get around 60 FPS and the response time is actually not that bad. There's almost no delay on your commands. The game is enjoyable and the graphics are amazing. Ghostwire Tokyo is somewhat of a similar game, 
but it's slightly more demanding, or should I say worse utilized because there are quite a few stutters in this game no matter what settings you choose. Speaking of which, we are running the game on cinematic settings, which is basically ultra and we have DLSS set to quality. Now there is this one bug where if texture streaming quality is not set to auto, you'll occasionally get a huge FPS drop all of a sudden, and it's pretty random, so if that's the case for you, then you can simply set the texture streaming quality to auto and that will pretty much fix the whole issue. Visually, I didn't really notice any changes when I set the setting to auto, so my recommendation would be to keep it on auto if you don't want to experience any random FPS drops. Hitman 3. Here we have everything maxed out, everything's on ultra. Every ray tracing setting is also enabled and DLSS is set to balanced. Now I don't really play this game at all, which is why we're looking at the built-in benchmark. From the looks of it, it seems that the game is running well and in case you get less than 60 FPS in the actual game, you can simply disable one of the ray tracing effects or change the overall quality from ultra to high and that should give you a bit of extra FPS. Ray tracing is really demanding in this game, so if you're not satisfied with the results, feel free to turn it off because without ray tracing, you'll honestly get upwards of 150 FPS. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. In this game I chose highest preset and set the ray tracing to ultra. DLSS is disabled. In areas where there's a lot of people like in cities and villages, you might see the FPS drop below 60, like all the way down to 50 sometimes, but in combat where it actually matters, you should get around 60 to 70 FPS. In caves and closed areas, I even saw the FPS go up to 100. Overall, I was quite satisfied with the results, but do consider turning down the ray tracing a bit because visually it doesn't really change the game all that much and lowering the setting should give you slightly more FPS. This way you should always get 60 FPS, even in demanding areas. Witcher 3. Now this game is slightly more demanding than the previous ones, so we can't really enable every ray tracing setting, but we're running it on Ultra Plus, which is better than Ultra and we have DLSS on Balanced. It's a game where you'll have to mess with the settings a bit because you won't really notice the change in some of the settings, but you might notice lower FPS. I myself didn't really notice any difference between High and Ultra Plus, but I did gain a bit of extra FPS from lowering these settings. But if in any case you prefer Ultra Plus with ray tracing on, you're free to do so. As long as the FPS stays above 30, this particular game isn't too bad. It is actually playable even at 30 FPS. And last but not least, Cyberpunk. This is one of the most demanding games right now. Obviously we won't be enabling path tracing, I don't even think our GPU supports that feature, but we will try our luck with ray tracing and see if it's playable. Here I chose high preset and I enabled every ray tracing effect. DLSS is set to balanced. Now no matter what I did, I couldn't quite get 60 FPS with these settings. In some areas it even went down to 35. I guess it's asking too much from an RTX 2060 to run this game at 60 FPS with ray tracing on. We could lower some settings and turn off a few ray tracing effects. But let's be honest, we're not getting 60 FPS in this game if we wanna have ray tracing enabled. And this brings us to the conclusion. Can RTX 2060 do ray tracing? Yes, of course it can, but not in every game. Currently, if we combine both new and used market, RTX 2060 is the cheapest GPU that can reliably do ray tracing. Do I recommend it? Yeah, it's a great card. If your goal is to just have a taste of ray tracing and you're on a bit of a budget, then don't shy away from this GPU because it's honestly not a bad card. It does its job way better than it should and in case you're not planning to play games with ray tracing, it's even better. And on that note, let's wrap up this video. I wanna thank everyone for watching and as always, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.